Hey everyone, it's Ken Scott back with another, I guess, episode of our video channel. Um, it's a bit windy out here, so let me just see what I can do to fix that. Hopefully this is better, like this. Okay, so I got a call, oh, Ken Scott Sr., U.S. Immigration Information Intelligence Analyst with triple W, U.S. Entry Waiver Services dot com, and we resolve all USA border crossing issues. And if you guys are wondering what's going on today, this video was inspired by uh, uh, an applicant that I just got off the phone with ten minutes ago. Um, Thank you, thank you, okay. Just to show you guys where I am right now, I am right here by Parliament. So for the mellow fellow who says I'm in England, well, I'm in Victoria, British Columbia, as you guys, well, you guys see me, but you guys see the Parliament building. So, anyway, so you guys see that. So, I'm going to show you guys, um, and always when I say guys, I mean male or females, gender neutral. So, I'm going to show you guys the departure for the Coho, which is a ferry that goes from Victoria to uh, Port Angeles. And you can also um, file your U.S. waiver applications there if you're here in Victoria. But the main subject of this video is something that the, the applicant just told me on the phone. Apparently, he read a website that said if you use a lawyer, essentially your case is processed faster and uh, all that, you know, BS. Well, let me let you guys know up front, that is, that's not 100% BS. That's not 200% BS. That's one million percent bullshit. And you guys know I am always bluntly honest with what we say. It makes no difference using a lawyer to uh, prepare these cases. If anything, the lawyer can make it worse. And the problem is a lot of these lawyers, let's go to Victoria as the harbor, but what it is, a lot of these lawyers they really don't know what they're doing. You know, I've said this before. They say, well, the book says this. Well, the book means uh, fuck all if the agency is not following the book. You have to deal with someone who worked with these agencies and for these agencies with the American government. And I can honestly say that that's me. Um, if you look on our bio, you can see exactly you know, what I did with the American government. I worked for the American government for, I think, uh, I would say between 15 and 20 years in different agencies and you know, federal and law enforcement and all that good stuff. So we were actually enforcing these laws on people. So, and because my background is in criminology, my degree is in criminology, and because I was a law enforcement trainer, because I've trained immigration lawyers on these cases regarding uh, how to win against the government, um, I would venture on a limb and say that we are probably way more experienced, have more knowledge than any law firm. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is where the coho is launched. Uh, I won't go in there and film because U.S. Customs is in there. They might give me shit for filming inside, so. But anyway, guys, don't believe the BS from these lawyers because the fact that a lot of times what they'll do is, they'll, they'll, first of all, they'll tell you what you want to hear. Then they'll quote you an outrageous price. Now, we have higher prices too, mind you, that's fine. But then what they do is they'll tell you, let's say, I don't know, let's just say, uh, two, 
3K for a waiver, or those likely more. They'll bill you on 15 minute increments. So a phone call, that's 15 minutes. Uh, a letter, that's 15 minutes. Uh, internet research, oh, that's two hours right there. And what they do is they take your retainer, put it in the trust fund, and bill from that. And then basically, uh, everything's done. They'll like, there's a good chance they'll come back to you and say, oh, we need more money now. The trust fund's depleted. Guys, it's one of the biggest scams around. And you're dealing with people, a lot of them, who have no clue what they're doing. I've argued and debated with these lawyers on the phone many times. I had a friend who mistakenly used one and then she, she didn't realize that what we do, so I was on, it was a three-way call and let's just say he did not like me. I will just say that. And he was saying how much he's a lawyer. I said, but look, she's not inadmissible under 212A2A, nor does 212A2C apply. She does not have trafficking, yes, she's charged with it. She's not commit, convicted. She did not admit to the essential elements of the crime. So why is this person inadmissible? He didn't know what to say to me. He said, well, I think, it's fine what you think, sir, but I'm asking you, why is this person inadmissible? He didn't know what to say to that. I said, so if this person is not deem deemed inadmissible, why are you preparing a waiver explaining the person's uh, involvement or possible involvement in an offense? Then by, I said, by you preparing it that way, you're going to make her, you're going to deem her inadmissible now by her possible voluntary admission to something that may make her inadmissible. So common sense dictates this has to be approached from a different angle. Let's just say I'm not on his Christmas list. So bottom line is she told him to kick rocks. We got, we got her assaulted. She does not need a waiver. And he lost his 4K. <laughs> he wanted 4K, but he didn't get that. So anyway, the point of the story is that you guys can't really believe with the, the, the bullshit from these lawyers. Because again, a lot of them don't know what they are doing. They don't know. They'll, take, they'll, they'll try to talk a good game, but you can see through BS and you can trust your gut. There's a good old Victoria Clipper. I wonder, I wonder if I can go down here and film. Uh, uh, well, they may come out with guns drawn. You know what, I'm gonna try it anyway. This might be a bit foolish for me. Uh, let's see. I see a patrol car over there. Mm. I think I'll just do it like this. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Victoria Clipper, fast ferry to Seattle. And okay, good. There's well, there's no one out, so. Oh, it doesn't say it. No. Nope. All right, well, it's fine then, I guess. But anyway, so yeah, this is where the Victoria Clipper takes off, or casts off. You got all the CBSA over there. Yeah, probably won't film here too much. So, <laughs> yeah, but guys, so, no matter whom you use, you really need to make sure the person knows exactly what they are doing. They understand uh, the laws, they understand the provisions, they understand the principles behind the packets, behind these waiver applications. And basically, at the risk of sounding like a parrot, you have to make sure the person knows what they're talking about, what they're doing. But regarding re the BS of using a lawyer will make your, increase your chances, that's bullshit. That's not the case. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance you'll get a denial, but that's the chance you take. So, I kind of wanted to show you guys Victoria. Because the thing is, um, I'm also going to tell you about us, about the structure we have. We don't just sit in the office all day. 
we actually do a lot of home visits. Now, the home visits are mostly for um, the applicants higher on the food chain. Let's say, for example, you got a guy by the name of Jay Sadu or Jazz Sadu, and Jazz has a very colorful past based upon his uh, involve, prior involvement with certain individuals. Jazz is no longer involved. His life has changed. But Jazz has... Uh oh, wait a minute. Headset's falling out. Okay. But Jazz has individuals who remember him from the past and would love to meet him in a dark alley, so to speak. So Jazz sometimes, you know, when he leaves his home, he's looking over his shoulder four or five times, his head spinning around like the exorcist, making sure that uh, his past is not catching up, so to speak. So guys like that, they're often scared to come to the office or scared to <laughs> even leave their homes, like I said, because of the past. So those kind of guys will get a home visit regarding putting their packet together. And then, you know, they go to the board and file and all that good stuff, yada, yada. So the home, we don't mind doing the home visits, but it's usually only for like the serious criminality cases or issues. For the smaller stuff, we ask those people to come to the office. But having said that, oh, let's look at this. Regarding the office, we don't just give out the address right away. We don't have it posted because honestly, we really like to screen people before they come in to make sure, number one, they have sound mind. Number two, make sure they have the uh, funding to go on this you know, venture. And number three, it basically saves time from being wasted. Oh, look at this. The boat just pulled in. Look at this. The Coho Jazz pulled in. I wonder, I wonder if I can get closer. They might wonder why this guy filming. Mm. Yeah, maybe I won't film right here. I anyway, know I forgot what I was talking about there. But yeah, no, I was saying we don't give out the address until the person's past security screening because we don't want anyone coming down who is not of sound mind. And also, if they cannot afford the service, it's no point wasting their time or ours. We had an individual once that wanted to come down. We declined his business. He said on the phone that he's sick and tired of being rejected and he wanted to come down anyway. I said, well, sir, there's no point coming down. We don't, you know, nothing we can really do for you. The truth of the matter is I didn't want the guy because I thought he was unstable mentally. And that's because apparently in high school, he brought two or three pipe bombs in school and the school found out about it. And there's a bunch of, a bunch of crap that happened afterwards. The guy was deemed mentally unstable and <laughs> Apparently, for what he's telling me, oh, here we go. We watch him offload. He's been rejected his entire life by women, by school, by employers. He's basically just a societal reject, to be bluntly honest. So when we told him no, that just broke the camel's back. Well, he came down, but what he didn't realize is the, the, the corporate mailing center that we have on our site, that's for mail, corporate mailing center. And because he, he failed a security check, he had never had the actual address, so he came down, he could not find us. So he's apparently, from what I was told, he's walking around looking, demanding, he was demanding with me on the phone for someone to come see him, someone to come see him. And I said, okay, I'll tell you what, sir. Tell me, who you, tell me where you're standing, tell me what kind of clothes you're wearing, and tell me what car you're driving. And he says, why? I said, well, I'm going to have someone come meet you. And he said to me, you're going to call the cops. I said, sir, I guarantee you one million percent, you will not be met by law enforcement. And I was being honest with him. I was not sending the RCMP. So he said, no, that's okay, never mind. And he left and hung up. And I know he left because the individuals I sent down, they saw him get in his car and leave. Because we have our own security staff. And what 
the staff members are basically some individuals who get f either free waivers or they don't need waivers. We got them lifetime clearances. In exchange, they give us free security services. These individuals had a habit in the past of uh, assaulting RCMP officers, ramming police barricades, and I guess apparently practicing their Mike Tyson moves on these cops. So the majority of these people did not get convicted since they were innocent. And the ones who are convicted, they got waivers, waivers done for free. So I was told on no certain terms, we have any trouble, give them a jingle. They are more than happy to come down and sort the problem out. And we've only had to use them on three occasions. So anyway, I kind of got off topic there for a bit. I'm showing you guys the vehicles offloading here. Oh, and there's the people up there. So that's the coho, and it came from Port Angeles, Washington. And uh, I believe they, they've already been pre-cleared. No, they're gonna get cleared here, I think. I don't think you do pre-clearance um, in Port Angeles before you get on the boat, because CBP, you have CBP here. I'm not quite sure, honestly, about this. If they're pre-cleared there, or if they're pre-cleared here, I do know if if yeah if they're leaving here, well, no, you know what? I don't think they're pre-cleared here now. I'm not sure, honestly, guys. That I'm gonna have to research. Anyway, so I just wanna show you guys. We got lucky enough to see the boat unloading. But anyway, so we have a very unique structure how we how we do things. And besides the home visits, besides the the channel here, our website, um, a lot of good things we offer you guys. Uh, I've got a big project coming up here soon. I'm just chomping at the bit to launch it. And once it's launched, there's a high degree of probability we're going to save you guys some money, or some of you guys some money, from not having needing waivers in the first place. I'm just chomping at the bit here. And once this project is launched, I can guarantee you with 1 million percent certainty the competitors are going to really, really despise me even more than now. So... Uh, some people here were telling me, are you, are, are you okay? You say, yeah, I'm safe, it's fine. <laughs> but once this project is launched, some of you guys will not need waivers. Um, the few things I have, to, I have to iron out first, though, that's the only problem. So. But this will also propel us to be the top of the, in, in the food chain here regarding uh, these border crossing waivers. Oh, there's a horse-drawn carriage there. So, oh, here we go, James Bay. And for the mellow fellow in Ontario who happens to see this video, once this project gets launched, it's also going to impact Ontario. And the discount waiver companies there are going to really be looking for my head because they're going to lose a lot of business. The lawyers actually, are, they're going to lose a lot of business as well because people are going to basically be able to not need a waiver or if they need one, then you know, we can sort them out even better or if they qualify for the lifetime clearance, then even more. Now also the gentleman today said he didn't know if he qualified for the September letter because the fact that uh, we don't post which offenses qualify and we do that on purpose so that's one of the screening tools we have in place, and apparently it worked. So it worked in a sense that competitors cannot look at the site, try to reverse engineer what we do, and, and, and remarket it at a lower price. So we're top dogs in that industry and overall. So anyway, guys, just a quick video. I could be a bit long-winded, like it's almost 20 minutes now. So again, Ken Scott, senior U.S. Immigration Information intelligence analyst with www.usentrywaiverservices.com and you can reach us at 1-888-908-3841 or 604-332-9213. So yeah, it's Ken Scott just here in Victoria, British Columbia. Just wanted to make a quick video, but again, you guys know how long-winded I can be. <laughs> so. Anyway, there's a coho. You got some more valuable info. 
don't believe the hype, so to speak, like the song. Don't believe the hype from these lawyers because they're feeding you uh, basically a bunch of bullshit. And part of the service, the new service we're going to offer actually is exposing the tools that these, the, well, tools and techniques that these firms use in order to get money from you and also adjudicate your case. So this is why I'm telling you the discount waiver companies are not going to like us. The law firms are really going to despise us because we're basically giving away their secrets. So if you guys do decide to use a lawyer, they let me buy. Oh yeah, thank you. So yeah, so if you guys do decide to use a lawyer, you're going to be well armed regarding knowing what to ask, when, how, and where. So if if and when they try to try to pull bullshit, or when they pull bullshit, you'll see it right away. And say no, no, thank you, sir. Have a nice day. So, but that's fine anyway. So, it's my job to ensure that you guys are totally satisfied, whether you use us or not. So, again, Ken Scott signing off now. And in the words of my Vulcan colleague, live long and prosper. <laughs>